Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday. It's February 11th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And today we really just had a, a, a reversal type day. We've been trading up for the last couple of days, so we've made a pretty good move up here. We went. We've gone from 3,300 basically, 3,303 something like that, all the way to. 3375 or so so that's almost a 75 point move in a couple of days which is probably a little overdone it's probably time for a little bit of a correction so you notice we traded up found some resistance up here around 3374 and then we sold off and this is usually going to be the middle of your pattern if you continue on we've talked about that a few times lately there's your first leg down and then you get that little correction in the middle of there and so I'd at least look for a measured move down. And you can see we actually went on down and filled that gap. That's a, you know, I didn't, you wouldn't expect we we're trending up this well into, you know, almost 10 o'clock today. Um, you wouldn't necessarily expect us to pull back and fill that gap today, but they, but prices did. And so there's still another gap, I believe, from the day before right here that we never filled. And that's down at 33.26 or so. So we still haven't filled that gap. So it wouldn't surprise me to see us try to fill that before prices go higher. So we'll just have to see. But uh, anyway, that's what I saw today. Uh, actually, if you going up here, you got your first leg and then your second leg. And we didn't quite make it there on this first move. Um, but if you count it from right there, we had a perfect measured move. So this one's uh, really what you probably got here is you got a leg up and then a two-legged correction, which, you know, it's kind of hard to see that until after the fact. But you can see, and then we pretty much got a measured leg. You probably wouldn't see that until we started higher from here because that's kind of hard to see at this price level that that's a two-legged correction. But it is. And that's probably going to be the center of the pattern. We trended up, and then we got two legs down, and we actually overshot that a little bit before we corrected. So uh, anyway, I'm going to back out. We'll talk about the trades. But you can see clearly we had a two-tiered channel going up. Then we had one coming down. This was like a little spiking channel here. Um, I didn't test it, but if you drag this up, it'll probably fit. Well, it really does. So, But uh, we had a little bit of a... a Two-tiered channel working here. We had an overshoot, and that usually leads to a, uh, a break of the trend line, which we did, and then we got the next leg down. And so that's what we were looking at today. You can see um, there's some sideways stuff in here. Just stay out of that for the most part uh, right here, too. I Just stay out of that. We'll talk about them when we get to them. Let's back out a little more where we can see this. Volatility has kind of slowed down a little bit in the volume. We're kind of getting back to a more normal market, which um, after some of the volatility we have these days may seem a whole lot easier. And really they are. If you can trade that volatility we've had for the last few days, then you can trade this a whole lot easier. So, uh, But anyway, 7 o'clock came right in here. We were working up, trying to make that second leg. Uh, you do have a failed second entry short right here. Notice that double bottom, first entry, second entry. But you can't go long really right into that resistance because this is looking like a range at this point. This is definitely not looking uh, like we may get two legs up. So, uh, but when it comes back and it and you find this, uh, and you probably wouldn't have had this trend line yet unless you were really good at this. Because this one was not off, you didn't find this one off the highs. You kind of found it off these secondary highs here. And really you had to be playing this channel right here. But obviously you could easily find that resistance. So really you were looking at this little small channel here and this resistance. And that's kind of what you were playing. So notice you're, you know, you're closing right here. You're still confirming this trend line right here. You're still closing inside uh, basically inside that trend line, inside the EMA, and uh, you can treat this just like a little failed break out of this congestion area right here. 
And so I like going long right there. Um, this actually broke lower and turned and went out the other side. I like going long right there. It's a nice setup. Nice failed break lower. And you got enough room to get out before here. And you actually made a little bit higher high already. So boom and off it goes. And then it reverses here. Uh, this is the first close outside. Um, I don't really see any reason to go long right here though. And when you get this failed second entry long, when it breaks below this bar, I like going short right there. Your stop would actually have to go above that bar. Um, and this is a little bit of an inside bar, but this is just a failed breakout on what's looking like it could be a range day. And this is a lower high, uh, failed second entry long, failed breakout. There's a couple of different ways to look at that as well. So I like that trade. Um, of course, it runs on down a few times. Uh, notice you made another swing high higher than this one, so you get another failed second entry long right here. And again, it's right off the key entry point. And you still got enough room before you get to these last lows. And so I like that one. And then this is where you would draw your trend line, right? Through those first couple, through these swings here. And when this finds a little double bottom here, uh, the key, the problem is we don't have a close outside this trend line yet, but we're a little bit away from the EMA. Um, we've had some support right here. Notice that double bottom. So you really got a double test right there. It's a little bit of, you know, this was at 6 a.m. and this is not till 8.30. So I'm not crazy about that being a double test. But when it makes it here, um, I'm feeling a lot better about it. So um, if you've got enough room to, the way you really have to play this is you have to have enough room to get out before getting back to that EMA. And so, um, if you don't have enough room there, I, I, this one would have to be green. Uh, you could almost argue for this to be blue, but um, you're just looking for a scalp out of this. You're not really looking to ride it all the way to the highs, although this thing turns out to be a great move. So it runs up, and then we just start working sideways here. And um, again, this is just really too congestive to enter on. Um, you can't go long into that and you really don't want to go short into that. But when you get that little failed breakout, um, you may take this trade. And really what I'm, you're also looking at this, notice there's a new low there, there's a first entry, second entry. But when you get into a little congestion and ranges, you can almost forget about second entries and failed second entries. But the reason I really like this one is just a little failed break lower. Um, and the fact that it's reversing. If you've got enough room to get out before getting back to these highs, uh, you could take that trade. It's a little bit aggressive, but that's a relatively strong move up. And with a trap here, um, you're probably going to get another leg up similar to that one. And you actually get a little bit more. This actually spikes up and you get a spiking channel here, a little tight channel. Unfortunately, you don't really get another good opportunity to enter this one. You don't get a failed second entry long until way up here after you've already come off the upper side and you probably should have had this channel by now. It's a little confusing because you had this little shoot up above here, but you'll see that in the overnight. You can't pay as much attention to some of this overnight stuff because you'll get overshoots and that doesn't usually lead to a reversal always in the overnight. So uh, the problem is that the volume's real thin and it's much easier to move the market. It'll do some little different things than it'll do during regular trading hours. So, you know, if you see this overshoot during uh, a regular, during the regular trading hours, which are basically 8.30 to 3.15 or whatever, then you want to be real careful uh, about getting long down here because you'll probably, an overshoot will usually lead to a break on the other side. Uh, but if it happens during the overnight hours, which is this blue area here, uh, then it's just not nearly as... Uh, reliable so um, but anyway we're working up and you don't want to go be getting long up here either and so but you got to be careful about getting short trying to pick tops um, there was a lower high here that I wouldn't have minded going short on but my signal bar is horrible just too bullish um, but notice what happens you get you've got a double bottom here and you get a little failed break lower and it breaks it bounces right off that EMA uh, we're probably going to shoot back up and 
into this, even if we're going to go lower. So I like going long right there. It's basically uh, a little failed break lower, a double test of this level right here. Uh, notice when we push through this EMA, or, or I'm sorry, midline and the EMA, we really didn't come back and test it. So this was a pullback to test that midline. And of course it bounces off of it, which is what you'd expect on a failed break out of that little congestion area. Like I said, I'd like to go short there, but not very good. You get a little breakout pull back short here, but it's right into a double bottom. Not a very good signal bar. You come back here, and now you got a failed second entry long and a double test from this underside. I, I'd prefer to have a better signal bar than that here. Um, if you had a better signal bar, I'd probably make that blue. I'm sorry, red, because uh, that's a nice short on a failure and a double test. And you're looking for prices to come back to the trend line anyway. But in the way my chart set up, you'd have to, you know, I'm going to make that one green. Even though really on a failed second entry setup, you don't care as much about the signal bar. I'm still probably going to filter this trade because this has been a strong uptrend. And you're really um, just trying to catch a run back to here. If this was a real strong trend, I'd probably tell you, you wouldn't even want to take a short. But in this case, you may risk this back here if you've got a better setup than that that's a little aggressive there and of course you get a nice signal bar here on a failed second entry long again because there's a double top first entry second entry but you're right at the key entry point and you would expect this trend line to win out over this secondary one here but it doesn't it doesn't turn out that way this thing just takes off so but i just you know, you just really can't take that trade there. It'll, it'll fail more times, than, you know, even though you, this is what happens to people. So make sure you listen to this. Uh, it worked this time and it looks wonderful. And you're probably, and you were probably looking at this and maybe saw the failed second entry long. And you're probably thinking, man, that's a great setup. But nine times out of 10, if you take that trade, it will fail. And so you'll watch it this one time and it looks beautiful. And I mean, this was just a perfect setup. But the next time you take it, guess what? The next nine times you take it, it'll fail. And this one time I'll have you trying it over and over. And especially if you took it and it worked, it really kind of reinforces you to take that trade again. Um, but even if you just watched it and you were thinking about it and see this, it puts the idea in your head that, hey, I should take this trade next time. And next time, and like I said, the next nine out of 10 times, it'll probably fail on you. So if the trade, if you did the right thing, and even if it takes off, don't let that bother you because that's just that's that's that psychological part of the market. This was not a good setup. So if you didn't take it, you did the right thing, even though it looks really tempting. It's not a good setup because most of the times it's it's going to turn back up there. So anyway, I hope that makes uh, sense. I hope you get what I'm trying to uh, relate to you there. But we run down, we come back, we get a first entry, and then right at the midline, we get a second entry. We did have an overshoot, but it was kind of hard to say at that point if that's where the lower trend line was. It looks correct based on this, but we didn't really have enough evidence on, on this end that maybe it was down here and maybe the midline was somewhere else. So, uh, and notice this trend line moving up. You get a close outside and a new high. So I'm going to take that second entry right there. Uh, just hoping to get a scalp. And you get a little more than that. And then we fail here. And there's actually a second entry uh, long going back here. But uh, I think that's a little bit too congestive. And I just stay out of that. Um, you're really looking for prices to come back up here if this is correct, which it turns out it is. But at this point, you're still underneath and you're, you're really looking for a short here, a good setup, and you don't get one. And so it bounces. Now you're looking for a short. But again, it's just too congestive and you don't get a very good setup. And notice what would happen to you if you went short. It fails. And you get, and notice you got the overshoot and then you get the break. But it does give you a great setup here. And... Um, Notice your new high. And so this is a lower high right here and a big bearish bar. I like that one. And this thing just takes off to the downside. And then notice you get another new low there. First entry and you come back and there's a second entry. And that's a great setup too. And it runs on down. 
And of course, you got to close outside. Now you got two legs down. So you expect a little reversal here, a little correction. And we get that. And we're moving up. Make a little double top, a lower high. Really, you could have probably entered there. I didn't mark it being this late. Um, you can count a double top either way. So that could, that's a new high, first entry, second entry. Uh, but your smarter traders are probably going to wait and see if there's another failure. And there is. And then look how it takes on off here pretty quickly after that. So that's a possibility. I'll mark it green. But it's a little bit aggressive just because you don't have, you, you want to see that reversal type pattern really. And then remember that this may be the middle of the pattern for this little move. I can't remember if we talked about that at the beginning or not. And you can see that's a perfect measured move exactly to the tick right there. And then we bounced from there. That's all that's after two o'clock. So it was a pretty good trading day. We're kind of getting back to more normal price action. Still plenty of trades in here. And I've had to say it a few times lately. Anytime you're not, you know, people ask me, is this a good trade? Is this a good trade? Just, just ask yourself, uh, if you're not 100% sure about a trade, even if it's a good trade, it's not a good trade for you because you're not sure. You're just, and if you're not sure and you take that trade, you're taking it, you're gambling basically. And gamblers do not make it in as traders. I've said that a, a lot and maybe I hadn't said it lately. So uh, I thought I would say it again today. If you don't understand what's going on and you're not 100% sure, you think you know what prices are fixing to do, I don't care how good a trade looks. The right answer is you don't take a trade. Wait until it clears up until you understand what's going on. So like right in here, the best thing to do is just don't take a trade because you don't know. It's hard to know what prices are doing. Are they going to find resistance and turn down? Or are they going to find support and turn up? Well, we traded up into this. So the odds are we'll probably trade out, but that doesn't always happen. So you got to remember that if, if you're not 100% sure what prices are going to do, and you're not 100% sure what they're trying to do and where they're headed, the right trade is no trade, no matter how good it looks. So just tell yourself that. That's where discipline and, and being a disciplined trader comes in, and that's the difference between maybe being a break even and being a loser, or maybe even being break, that may be the difference between being break even and being a profitable trader. So I mean, if you can get to break even, you're doing better than a lot of traders. And if you can get to break even, eventually you can get to be a profitable trader. Uh, you may still have to continue working on those little things like I just talked about. But, but if you can get to break even, you can get there. Uh, but it's amazing how many people can't get to break even because they can't. They just don't stick with it long enough. They don't have the mental fortitude um, to be disciplined enough. And, it, and it's, you know, I relate it to other things. It's like. This is a skill and you got to be skilled at it. It's just like you may have the knack for it, but even if you got the knack for it, you got to train yourself. It's just like being a professional baseball player. I tell people if you've never stepped up and batted again in a, in a major league baseball game against a major league picture, I don't care how good an eye hand coordinates and you got, you're probably not going to hit the ball because those guys are good. Even even seasoned batters, you know, only get a hit two or three times out of ten. So the odds are you're going to get a hit zero times out of ten. Well, you're going up against seasoned pros here. So until you get skilled at this and, and hone your skills and get practice at it, you're not going to have many winners. You're not going to get many hits. So and then the mental part is very similar to trying to lose weight or if you've ever tried to stop smoking, I've never smoked or had any kind of habits like that, but I have tried to lose and gain weight. So I know how that is. And the only way to lose weight is to, is for your mind to be stronger than your desires. And it's the same. It's just as very similar to trading. If you don't have that mental fortitude to say no, or to say, 
I can't take this trade or I'm not going to take this trade or maybe even I got to take this trade because everything's here and I know where prices are going. Some people actually have the problem and they're scared to pull the trigger. Most people don't have a problem pulling a trigger. It's just pulling it all over the place when there's no reason to. So, but, but they, we do get some people that their problem is they can't pull the trigger. So it's, it's the same, it's the same deal. It's just a different, just in the opposite direction or whatever. So, um, but this, you know, much of what we do is mental and you, you know, you've got to be able to read this price action and you'll get people that have been doing this for a month and they see second entries all over this chart because they're here. But they'll be taking second entries to the downside when they need to be looking for them to the upside and vice versa. And so just because you see a second entry it doesn't mean you want to take it. You want to wait. You want to take them with trend at the key entry points. And I say this a lot. Where are the key entry points? The trend lines, really they're at the important support and resistance areas. And where are those? That's your flat support and resistance. Shorts off these highs, most likely. Longs off these lows. Trend lines. And a trend line, all it is is a slanted support and resistance. It works the same way. And you get your resistance off this side. You get your support off here if you're coming down. You get your uh, resistance off the trend line coming down. And you get your support usually off the trend, uh, trend channel line coming back. And there's often a midline in there. And you can it can work both ways. It's less reliable. so But it can work both ways. you got to be careful off the midline. And then the EMA as well. But generally, you want that EMA to set up near the trend line like that. Those are great setups right there. Of course, it's your, you know, your dominant pattern has been to the upside, but that's what you want to see uh, in most cases. And uh, like right here, this trend line's working a little bit with the EMA right through here. Um, we had a lot of sideways action today too. Uh, but there was a trend up and a trend down. But anyway, I hope that's helpful. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.